This is the Braves Today podcast. I'm Ben Taylor. We continue our chat with the Braves sideline reporter, Kelly Kroll from Bali Sports. Uh, it's funny because you talk about that and having to drag stuff out of him. Like when those pictures got released of them leaving for the All-Star game, uh, for getting on their plane, yeah. and they showed – they showed Spencer Strider and they showed Sean Murphy and they're just in jeans and like a plaid shirt with white tennis shoes on to, to make the trip. And I'm sitting there thinking, if this could not be more representative of what we think their personality is, so true. You know, they didn't do the fancy track suit. They didn't get, they, I mean, it just was, and it almost was like, yeah, we'll stop and take a picture, say cheese. Yeah. All right. I'm ready to get on the plane and leave with my wife. I mean, it just was so phenomenal. It, it was so great. It's such a good balance when you've got, you know, Orlando Arcia and you've got exactly. Ronald on the other side of that as flashy as all get out. Like, really good balance there. But, no, I got a kick out of it, too. It was actually Cincinnati. You know, Sean's from the Midwest. Um, right. In Pullen, Ohio. Um, so when we were in Cincinnati, um, after the game, I'm, I'm just kind of, you know, um, in that, I'm trying to, the underbelly of the stadium waiting to go into the clubhouse. And that'll also be where the parents and family members and all that right. friends of the players will kind of hang out and wait right there. And I'm standing there getting ready to go in and this sweet darling little lady steps up to me and goes, Kelly, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Sean's mother. And I thought to myself, first of all, she's like five one. Okay. And he's six, you know, yeah, he's like six, three, five, six. Five. Yeah. So he clearly didn't get his height or girth. No you um but they look just alike i knew the second she stepped up it was his mom and she just i mean it was the cutest thing she wanted to talk all about the broadcast and how grateful she was of the interviews we do and what we say about sean and how nice and this and that and i thought to myself clearly he didn't get the gift to gab from you because no. you have no problem with it she was so cute it even asked for a picture at the end of it and i got a kick out of it because i thought your son would die first of all if he knew this probably but second it was just i i, I just always laugh when i see mom and dad or moms or meet them in and how different their their kids have become yes. right no but my dad's also very very quiet and then here i am i just don't stop talking so i i guess that maybe that's just how it works sometimes <laughs> yeah it's a, it's the same in our house i mean when i told him what i i swear when i got into the radio business back in the late 90s and you know tried to do the tv thing a little bit and I swear my parents didn't know what I did for the first 10 years of my career because they never ask about it. They didn't know what to, they're, they're both quiet. They're just like, I mean, he's making money and he's buying houses and he's affording to live. So I guess he's okay. And I would even ask him, I'd say, did you listen? Like you could, you, right. you know, I'd sit and did they're you like, mean? you know, and they're like, you can listen, I can listen to it. So uh, yeah, I don't think they had any clue what I did to start with. So uh, getting back to the team aspect, you talk about the, the yin and yang with, the Sean's and the and the and the and the Spencers of the world and then the other personalities. I think that good mix works because we've said this numerous times. For some reason, even when this team is down four to five runs, it never seems like it's over, which is such a contrast because growing up in the 80s, that was the ongoing joke going to the ninth up six, they'd say, let's hold them Braves. Like that <laughs> that was a normal thing for people sure. to come back and beat the Braves. And that script has flipped mm -hmm. from then to now where it's you almost get excited late in the game when the Braves are down because you're thinking, all right, let me see who's coming up. Who's going to, yeah, and, do it. And, right. and who's going to step up and who's going to be the hero tonight. You know, the tiny Albies of the world hitting two home runs in a game and you're thinking this is not supposed to happen. Like this is – nobody scripted this. So uh, that mentality that they go through because you can – is there a change in the dugout when they go from being excited until then they turn the business side on and they're like, OK, this is the job. This is what we've got to do. Yeah, um, I will say that's the one thing, right, when we were talking about the yin and the yang, they all have since they all have great sense of humor. So, I mean, like that's one thing they can pick on each other, but also fire each other up a little mm. bit with that. And um, the only to your point, it is absolutely a culture. It's a culture thing that's been built over the last couple of years because I know it wasn't always like that. But this this ability to feel like you're never out of a ball game, and they don't. And and what's even wa more wild to me sometimes is that I'll be sitting in the 
like you said, the camera well off to the dugout. I'll be looking in there late in a ball game. Maybe they're trailing or whatever. And I'll even get texts sometimes from Frenchie and he'll be like, what's the vibe down there? And I'll be like, I don't know. Like these guys are like asleep or something. Like last year it was the day games, like couldn't win in day games or whatever. And I'm right. thinking, I don't know, maybe we need to be bringing extra coffee in. Who knows? These guys just, but I'll, I'll be sitting there thinking, I don't know. They just, the energy isn't there right now. I can't figure it out. And all it takes is one guy, one, you know, flip. It, it just, and it can come from anywhere in the lineup. That's what I think this year more than any one through nine. Like you just said, it could be Ozzy. It could be Michael Harris could be Orlando Arcia. It's not always going to be Austin Riley, Ronald Acuna Jr. Matt Olson, you know, the guys you're maybe expecting even Ozuna at this point, it, it can come from anywhere in the lineup at any time. And the one thing I definitely do see, even though I, I, that's not to say the energy isn't always like that. I'm just saying those are the moments where I'm like, no, no, yeah. I've never known because these guys looked half asleep. There are other times where don't get me. They're always engaged. There's a guy I want to, I want to point out Kevin Pillar just because, and, uh, and even Sam Hilliard to a degree, but more so Kevin Pillar because he's a veteran and he's been around and he's been on really good teams. You think of some of those Toronto teams that he spent the majority of his career on. And he's a guy that, I will watch, go back to the backside of the dugout, pull out a laptop and kind of like you see him sifting through video and it'll be Marcelo Zuna who comes down or it'll be Michael Harris who comes down and he'll take that laptop and he'll look at them and he'll point something out to them. And, and I see them having these conversations and I think to myself, that's a guy who even though he's not on the field, he wants nothing more than to win. He wants hmm. to show his teammates Here's what I'm seeing. Here's what I saw this this pitcher attack you this way, or here's what I think you're susceptible to in this next AB or whatever. And I think he had a huge, huge part in turning Ozuna's season around. I think mm -hmm. he helped him find something mechanically that he saw because I watched him in Miami talking every single day, and then all of a sudden it just like clicked. And you think about Marcelo Ozuna telling us how he turned to Michael Harris during his little mini yes. stump and basically said. You're the best center fielder. You're the best guy. Let's just, let's go. Like, turn it on. Don't forget that. And right. so I, I just, I, I keep going back to that chemistry, right? And that ability that even though they may be trailing by a, a run, two runs, heck, five runs sometimes going into that ninth inning, but you see one, two, three is due up or even nine, one, two for that matter. And Michael Harris gets on base. All bets are off. Mm -hmm. As soon as Michael Harris gets on base or as soon as Ronald, just that first guy. And then from there, I think they feel like anything is possible. So it's, again, it's fun to be around that atmosphere versus the one you were saying, the other side of it, where you're just like, mm, <laughs> when's the shoe going to drop? Mm, yeah. Hang on. <laughs> like, yeah. Cause I've been on both sides of it and this one's a lot more fun. Yeah. Their, their relationship is unbelievable. They took some of that to the, to the all-star game in Seattle. Uh, you know, the, the, we even we even did an article uh, after the game where we said, you know, it, it took a slew of Braves in order for the National League to finally win one. And <laughs> I mean, I know that's a little bit of self-promotion, but still, it it's not false. It is oh, true. A third uh, of the National League lineup. <laughs> exactly. And so uh, and but you things people like Sean Murphy that other fans don't get to watch because they're going to watch their team. I mean, they get to see them when they come into town for the weekend. But. I'm not going to randomly go watch Minnesota Twin games, and 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 so when they get to see stuff like that, when you know when he throws a guy out in the first inning and and he shows it off, and then of course Arcia standing over him and laughing at him, and and because it's the All Star game, you can't get away with that in the regular season, but right. it, it's the All Star game. I mean, what did that do for the Braves in the All Star game to see you know Riley and Olson team up, for, you know? It, for uh, when he had to make the pick out of Riley's low throw on the ball that came yeah. in that the announcers clearly thought that was going to be an easy base hit. And then the double play, which we had to involve Pete Alonzo on that, which everybody, every brave fan hates Alonzo, uh, <laughs> which I did love the fact that Riley went over and gave him like a fist bump or whatever. And I thought, well, maybe there's a little peace offering there. I'm not sure with the whole mm -hmm. throw it again thing from early in the season. Oh, yeah. Which, yeah. by the way, I bought the T-shirt. I wear it on the pod quite oh, often. Oh, me too. Me too. I'm with, <laughs> I actually was going to text you and be like, hey, can I wear one of my like uh, poor Larry of crown shirts? But I, oh. I kept it very simple with the black today. But now I know for next time that I can <laughs> yes. pull out the roto wear. I love, I love it. And truthfully, gosh, I mean, 
Pete has to feel pretty silly. That's the thing. I yeah. think the guys realize, I mean, look what's happened to the Mets since that whole <laughs> deal. I mean, I've seen the tweets, right, about their record since he said it versus our record since it was said. And, and even the way Bryce Elder handled it afterwards where he was kind of like, I mean, heck, I'd probably say the same thing if I had just you know, correct. If I just parked one up on the on yeah. course, like the exactly. fact that Bryce sort of took the high road and was sort of like, well, I mean, I got to make a better pitch. He's not wrong to say for road again, kind of. You just and then you lose the game if you're the Mets, and you just feel silly. I would think if you're Pete, and right. and I mean, he's a really really good player. Not one of his better moments. Um, no. And hey, it makes it fun for the Braves and the Mets certainly to spice up that always fun rivalry. Anyway, but um. No, I I didn't realize that the um, pickoff, uh, the Murphy to Arcia, that was the first time that it had happened in a decade in the All-Star game mm -hmm. that, that a guy had been picked off. And a, a, a Rosa Rania, right, who's just mm -hmm. like the fastest man on earth. Yeah, um, who's like all world. Like. Um, so that was cool. I was so thrilled just in general that the baseball fans who clearly tune in for a game like that got to see Sean on that stage and Arcia, who nobody expected to be the starting right. shortstop of the all-star game, what those two do, because we get to see it every night and we're, we're just so blessed and lucky, but to, to show that talent off on that stage, I just thought it was awesome. And then I got a kick out of the Riley Olson stuff because I, if I read his lips, right, Matt okay. was saying, shut up, shut up. Like, so yes. Riley was clearly giving him, giving him the business about something. I yes. couldn't tell because the camera didn't, didn't um, show Riley, but I think he was probably like, you're welcome or something to the degree of like, did you not think I was going to get there or something? Cause so just even that camaraderie and that the, the way that they play with one another and it's never like, I hate, it's just it's like they remember it's a game when they're out there yes. because they really have fun playing it and then when they do things like that they get to also just sort of love on one another come at one another and right. to have all of that like you said on display i hope fans enjoyed it and i hope it means that you know um there's there's people who maybe don't see braves games all the time but it would encourage them to hey when the braves are in town we should really go see that team because heck they got eight all-stars. They got a team that's worth seeing if, 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 if they're not already aware of that. Yeah, it was kind of funny because we were doing we were looking at a write up for Braves today and we were talking about the players and former players. I mean, you got even yeah. Dusty Baker that was, you know, managing the team that was a Brave and, you, you know, of course, the Freddies of the world. And we were just thinking, man, how well represented is Braves country, even though they're on. Some are on other teams now and that kind of thing. It was it was really fun to watch. A um, couple of quick hitters before I let you get out of here. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted you to choose because I've, I've seen when you're on the desk, when you're not in the dugout and you're on the desk. Are you team Moylan or Medlin? Which would you rather be up there on? <laughs> and you well, and you have to choose. That. You Do have you to choose. Are you, are you, is number one or number two your favorite kid? That's yeah, I, Yes, yes. You have to choose because I have said before, I want to drink beer with Moylan. I just want to sit around. I don't even care if we talk baseball. I just want to sit around and drink beer and talk about whatever he wants to talk about. Yeah. They're, they're all so unique <laughs> in their own way. Cause there's team Nick as well. And yeah. you know, last year there was team birdie and team BJ and I, I love them all. We have such a great broadcast team. That's the thing. And Frenchie, I mean, he's on like another level. I mean, it, this, it, we should get paid extra for like semi babysitting him at times. I feel like <laughs> joking, jokingly. Um, no, they're 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 all they're such trips. Um, Moylan is the guy who like I can always rely on to bring the energy and to bring right. the laughs. So I love knowing when I'm hosting with him, I'm gonna be sitting out there at times. I'm sure just like barreled over, crying, laughing because he always says something. And and there's always that. Um, uh, not not that it's a language barrier, but they just have phrases that they yes. use that when he uses them here, I'm like, what did you just say? That's oh, what I love about it. That's why I say I want to drink beer and just hang out with him because I just want to see what all he says. Well, I always get a kick out of it. But I give Chris, I will say this, but then there's Medlin and Nick who I know will at least come prepared 
with numbers and stats and stories to back things up because who knows what Peter will come out there with. No, I, he does. He does. They all do their work. Don't get me wrong. But it's like you, you appreciate what each one's bringing to the table. And it's why the like camaraderie again with our group, I think is so great is because we can also poke fun at one another and have a good time. And um, Peter, just, I will warn you, if you go have a beer with him, just make sure it's in a cool like environment as far as temperature goes, because he doesn't handle the hot weather. Well, he'll tell you, he uses, the word spitzing he's a big uh spitzer really yeah like yeah he's he, he, you know <laughs> not all of us are blessed with glands that you don't sweat with you know so yeah, I know. poor guy out there on the set when it's 100 degrees and those hot lights are oh i can i literally that. give him my fan so that he can have two fans on him oh and, my yeah. goodness yeah, yeah. I, know. I know so he's yeah. a he's pampered as well so that makes it even worse so i don't know <laughs> now maybe now now maybe changing my mind on that uh I, and, and i will say one of the one of our favorite broadcast amongst our group there's a there's a bunch of us any everything from writers to the guys that jump on the pod and the broadcast with uh frenchy and chipper and mm -hmm. smoltz and, and and glavin and then of course they you know they call up maddox while they're in there and oh yeah Honestly, the next time we do that, go ahead and make a request to Bali. Just let's do a split screen and have them on the entire time and then have the game on over here the next time. Now, they probably don't want that with all the stuff that they're probably doing not. behind the scenes. Uh, but, you know, they, they will do that from time to time. You know, when they do that, they'll do that thing on ESPN where they do a football game. They'll just have the booth cam along with, you yeah. know, you can watch the home. And I thought, we got to do that with these guys. And Keep them mic'd up the entire time, even during breaks. Let's just keep them at, now. I, as I said, they don't want to do that, you and it probably don't needs want us to be on air very much longer, do you? <laughs> <laughs> it, it probably needs to be on HBO or something, so that way it's a subscription thing. Uh, but man, that was uh, what a fun time, and I'm sure those guys. I mean, because those guys, they also we talked about the relationship in the dugout. Mm -hmm. They acted like four brothers up in the yeah. booth. It was the most unprofessional broadcast that you yeah. could probably ask for. But it was also fun because those of us that, you know, watched and were fans during that time. I mean, it was just, you know, and Frenchie's, as you said, he was the little brother that was causing all the problems in the booth yeah. with the with the three older guys. Mm -hmm. it, it Their ability, because they are <clears throat> so comfortable with each other, to bring out the side of one another that you don't get to see that often that we don't get to see that often that's what that broadcast allowed like um because you know not to say they're buttoned up but you know smolty can be a little bit more buttoned up when he's doing a broadcast especially and so to have jeff open him up with stories then you got chipper there who i think was just a little nervous and, and, and it's funny not to say nervous but he just hasn't done a ton of tv no. and I think he didn't want to say something he shouldn't exactly or whatever it may be but the other guys i think got him to rely especially like i think glav because glav has done a lot of tv got him to the point where it's like dude you'll make a mistake just roll with it and then mm. before you know it they have and and these guys do like you said they play golf together all the time they clearly have their stories of and the stories they know of one another what they can and kind of can't <laughs> go where they can go but I will say I would love it if we could and I know we can't but if we could do cuts of like what happened the second we did go off air to commercial and what was actually said and the facial reactions and everything and who was punching who and who was eating who was running to the restroom all that stuff that would be equally as enjoyable as that broadcast was because that's the good stuff. This is the butt. So you're right. I would love to see them mic'd up and with a cam on them all the time. I just don't know that uh, they'd ever be able to come back. No, they, they, there's some, there's some, there's some blue haired old ladies up there that that would totally <laughs> let them down that they, that their boys that they watched all those years have turned into this. Uh, I can promise you. So uh, finally, I got to ask you, because we talked about Acuna, we talked about Arcia, the future of baseball, Acuna, De La Cruz yeah. with Cincinnati. I mean, that guy is so fun to watch. I mean, I, I don't watch Cincinnati baseball, but when they're playing, if they're on television somewhere, I'm tuning in for him. Mm -hmm. And then Otani, who, you know, a lot of us, West Coast bias again, I'm not staying up since I do a morning show. I'm not staying up till 11 o'clock to watch Angels games. It's just not going to happen. So yeah. uh, the future of baseball, when they talked about, you know, what was it, five, six years ago, baseball's dying, nobody's watching. And then you get these guys and it's turned into must-see TV. Yeah, uh, it's in very good hands. And I think that 
the narrative has kind of evolved from what you just said a few years back and thinking it's it's dying. And I, I also even think, I was just talking to my dad about this this morning, like even the draft feels different now. Yes. Like it's, it's this thought of like, these guys aren't five years away. They could be a year or two away because we've now seen it. We've seen these kids that at 21 or whatever are coming onto this stage. And not only are they like blowing our socks off, but they're ready for it. They're mm -hmm. ready for that stage at 20 years old. So now when you see guys that are being drafted, these college pitchers or whatever, you're thinking to yourself, I could see this guy next year. If you're a fan of, of, of your team or whatever, oh, he just drafted. And I think that changes the whole complexion of the game to a degree when you're when you're starting to think about who's on the horizon and how quickly they could be there um but yeah I, the the de la cruz kid when i saw him in person and even it, that was a cool series i won't lie and it's funny because it hasn't been going into cincinnati has not for the last i hate to say it six seven no. years been all that enjoyable you're just like all right let's get these three and get out of here because you just assumed a role um role mm -hmm. them, no matter where you were playing them and this this series was entirely different and it's funny moylan and i were actually talking about too that's a dangerous team if they make the playoffs yes it's a dangerous team in their home ballpark because it, it does have some home field advantages to it and to the the guys who've played there and they um they play to that. They play to those strengths mm -hmm. as fast as they are and, and everything else. And I think, um, yeah, that could be a dangerous one. But I, I I enjoyed my conversation with Joey Votto asking him about, for instance, Ronald Acuna Jr., who he said would be the, the number one guy he would pay to see right now. And coming from Joey Votto, I, I think that's incredibly high praise. And and he's always very well spoken and thoughtful in, in interviews. Um, again, I dealt with him a lot when I was in the NL Central. Um, but it, it, to hear what he had to say about Ronald and then even compare that to Ellie De La Cruz to a degree, like things he's doing that kind of make him think of Ronald at times, or even just in general, um, things he's never really seen, like stealing home. Um, right. But and, and then to ask him about Charlie Morton, like they were in the same draft class, uh, yep. Votto and, and Morton, and faced each other a lot back when Pittsburgh was pretty good. And, and Charlie was a big part of that team. And um so again, just an interesting dynamic that's happening in Cincinnati right now. And then you're seeing, like you said, Shohei Otani. I'll be really curious to see. I don't know when this is going to air, but what's going to happen with the Angels at the break? Are they going to move him? It seems I just don't know how, as an owner and as a GM, you can do that. But at the no. same time, if you think you can rebuild an entire uh, farm system with one guy and, and you're not going to make the playoffs this year, which is such a travesty with two of the best players in baseball being on that team. If, if we mm. don't see a Mike Trout and Otani in postseason, it just seems like, you know, um, that just is disappointing for baseball mm -hmm. fans. You, you should be seeing those guys in October. Um, but what do they do with them? Um, that'll be interesting. And wherever he goes, I thought Freddie Freeman handled it really well on, on the mic at the All-Star Game saying, that's mm -hmm. tampering. I'm not going to say anything, but I will say that there are 30 teams that would well, be there's, Otani right now. Yeah, there's no doubt. And it, it, it'd be interesting. You're right. I mean, that I've, I compared that if they traded him, That'd be your your Herschel Walker trade that they had in football years ago, where you get nine guys for him. I mean, they somebody would unload their roster in order yeah. to get that guy, and and not just for the fact that it's Otani, but I mean, do you realize how many tickets he sells and 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 jerseys he sells, and yeah, not to mention his home, the people back home that send in the media and and the Otani jerseys that are floating around, you know, overseas. I mean, it's. It's a. It's definitely. He's fun to watch. Cunha's fun to watch. De La Cruz fun to watch. Baseball has become fun to watch. Yes. Pitch clock. You pro. You nay on the pitch I'm clock. Pro. I'm all pro. I, am too. I mean, in our industry, especially, it's the difference of 30, 45 minutes at the end of the night. I know it sounds silly, but it's the difference of getting in bed at like 11:30 versus 12:30, and then you hop <laughs> the next morning. I don't know. Just the whole, the whole, your whole life balance is a little bit better this way. But also, I think the only ones I've heard be a little bit like. Mm, it, they've been pitchers and they've been more old school pitchers, truthfully. Like I know Charlie Morton will say, you know, I feel like there are times where we're rushed. I mean, we are. And mm -hmm. for younger guys trying to figure it out when things aren't, you know, going well on the mound right out of the gates and they can't get, you know, can't get a ball down or they can't get the feel or they, whatever it is, they don't really have time 
like they once did to sort of like I don't know, get into that rhythm like like they once could. Um, and those are the only guys that I've kind of heard be like, you know, I feel like we're we're turning this into entertainment a little bit too much. I, I like the way baseball was. But for the most part, I think overall, um, most of the guys really like it, really mm-hmm. enjoy it. And the fast pace has even helped, I think, the rhythm of the game. To yep. a degree, which is what they're all people just want a well-played game right and i think we're seeing a little bit more of that so well look at the all-star game no pitch yep. clock took forever to get through and <laughs> i mean it was one of those where i mean it, it, you were like this is what's letting people know how it's working now from a hitter standpoint the only thing that i wish they would change we've talked about uh before on the pod is um you know you got to be ready by set by nine seconds or yeah. whatever and our I say take it back to the little league. They're in the box. The pitcher can throw anytime he wants, whether they're ready or not. If they're not ready, that's on the batter. I mean, I think the batter ought to have, you know, as long as they're in the box. And I don't know if that rule change is going to happen. They've, um, you know, passing from ESPN was talking about they discussed the pitch clock yeah. during the all-star break when they were all together. And that was one of the things brought up was the movement in the box. If they're in there, do we just let it go? Because, I mean, you saw Travis got one called on him, a stri- you know, and he just and looked at the umpire like, you know, I got to come back out here. Like, you understand yeah. I'm going to be squatting in front of you here in a little bit and I'm going to say something. So I, mm-hmm. that's the only change I would like. So uh, I, I appreciate you doing this, taking the time to do it. Uh, oh, yeah. To, Hold on. To, I want to add to, to that point. I think you're right. Sorry. I, I, I think there's enough guys uh, that have kind of been like, we just need it to be logical. Mm-hmm. If, if You know, the whole like – it's your, I guess, as far as <clears throat> the home plate, um, did you see this guy make eye contact with this guy by eight seconds? Like, enough. Like, if they're both in there, they're both ready to go. And it's like, yeah, I think most of the players, in fact, have voiced that's the one thing they want to see changed. It can't be so black or white. There's got to be just what's logical, what what makes sense. Kind of like the football. Is it a catch or is it not? Like Right. If you can see, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, yeah, I think that'll be the one sort of thing that there is an evolution to how that rule plays out moving forward. I forgot what pitcher it was. One pitcher said, I just think that it's one of those things where as long as the pitcher starts his wine before the clock hits zero, if the batter's not in the box, then that's, you know, just right. let it go. Like just And so, as you said. Nobody wants to see a game end on – what was that? Wasn't it Houston and somebody that it ended on the strike three being because of a timing thing? And you're like, okay. And it was like a one run ball game. Yes. And you're thinking, okay. Like, it, cause I think he was down one, two. I can't remember who was at the plate, but, but that's what he got called for. And it ended the game like that. And I thought, okay, no, nobody wants that. Fans don't want that. Players don't want that. Like that's just not good for baseball. So let's make decisions based on what's good for the game. <laughs> <It's pretty simple. laughs> very well said thank you so much i appreciate the time and you taking the time out of your schedule uh, and and uh and visiting with us and we'll do it again before the season's over with and hopefully we'll be uh i don't know maybe midway through 60 more wins if we're able to get that in the second half <laughs> it's, anything is possible with this team that's what i've decided anything is possible i'd love that thank you thank you so much for having me on ben this was awesome you're awesome she's kelly i'm ben that's the braves today podcast thank you guys